So if you're going to be doing electrical projects, no matter who you are, you're going to need some basic tools and devices in order to get the job done as efficiently as possible. You're gonna need those devices in order to ascertain information when it comes to installing and then also diagnosing issues that you may be coming across when you're doing electrical work. So today, I'm gonna to be going over some of the most important devices, very basic devices that everybody should have in order to do electrical projects. Let's go ahead and jump right in, let's go. So to start out this list with must-have electrical devices, I'm going to start right off with the one that there is just no question to it. You have to have it, and that is your basic multimeter. So you don't really have to get super fancy with a multimeter, especially if it's not something that you're doing on a regular basis. You can just get something that's very basic. But of course, if you're doing a lot of projects and you want to make sure that you get something of quality and last a very long time and can handle a lot of the abuse, then you'll want to actually spend some more money for a little bit better quality item. Now, many of you are probably thinking, wow, this is really, really basic stuff. And that's because it is, it is very basic. But this particular device is just a must have if you're gonna be doing electrical projects because it's actually going to give you good, solid data. You're not just relying on a sound. It's actually gonna give you numbers. It's gonna tell you exactly what's running through those wires so that you know or get a better idea as to what you're working with or maybe where you might have a problem. So in order to find voltage, for instance, in a residential setting, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna turn the knob on the multimeter to the V with the alternating current symbol on it. And then I'm gonna take my black probe, I'm gonna insert it into the neutral hole on the receptacle, and that's going to be the larger hole that's on the receptacle. Then I'm gonna take the red probe and stick it into the smaller hole on the receptacle. That's going to be the hot side. So I wanna check from line to neutral and what I'm looking for is for 120 volts or somewhere right around 120 volts. That's gonna let me know that everything is wired up correctly for the most part and everything is running the way that it should. After I check my line to neutral, then I generally check my line to ground. And I just wanna make sure that my voltage is the same between my line to neutral and my line to ground, just as an added step to verify that everything is correct. And then I like to take my probes and I like to check neutral to ground. And there should be no voltage there whatsoever. If there is voltage there, then you obviously have an issue that you need to track down. Now, like I said earlier, the multimeter is capable of quite a few other functions. But for the most part, at least for me personally, and I think for the vast majority of people out there, we typically are using a multimeter to find that voltage, to make sure that the voltage is correct, to make sure that we're not getting any drops in the voltage. And then of course, using it as a tool to make sure that the power is either on or off, depending on what we're looking for. We're using it as a diagnostic tool to make sure that everything is safe before we start working on whatever it is that we're working on and handling those wires. Hey, really quickly, if you're finding value in this video and you're finding it to be helpful, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And if you have any comments about what you've seen so far, leave those down in the comment section. It really helps the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully be able to help them out as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. Now, the next device I'm gonna go over is one that I think everybody should definitely have. It's a very handy tool, but it's also one that you don't wanna just fully rely upon on everything. And that's this non-contact voltage detector. And the way that this works is you don't have to use probes in order to try and find whether or not there is voltage present. When this senses voltage, and what it's basically doing is you're putting it over whatever it is that you're trying to test. And it's sensing the electromagnetic field and based upon what it senses, it's gonna let you know whether or not there is uh, electricity present in whatever it is that you're checking. So you can actually stick this little prong here into receptacles, for instance, on the line side to see if there's power that's actively flowing through it. That way you know whether or not it's getting power, but this will not show you exactly what the voltage is. It's just basically telling you that, hey, there's power here. You can also use this in J boxes or really anywhere where you're trying to find out if there's live wires. Now, while this is a really cool and helpful tool, like I said, it cannot just be fully relied on. Now, I will say for the most part, when I've used this in order to find out whether or not a, a terminal was hot or a wire was hot, it's been correct the vast majority of the time. 
the reason I say you can't just fully rely on it is sometimes these things can actually be wrong. So that's where using a multimeter is going to be a much better tool to actually completely verify that the power is off before you start working on things. Also, some of them, like this one here, can detect low voltage. So you can use it for, I've used them for Christmas lights, trying to find bad bulbs. Uh, you can use them in your auto applications. So these are really neat tools that can really save a lot of time on a lot of different projects. Now, the next device I'm gonna talk about, I obviously feel like is a must own. This is a tool that's really gonna help you diagnose a lot of different things and be able to track a lot of different things down and that's this GFCI outlet tester. Now, what's really nice about this is you have all of these different codes or these different light combinations that show up at the bottom that's gonna tell you whether or not everything is wired up as it should be, or if you may have some issues that need to be addressed that you need to track down. Like for instance, you could have an open hot, open neutral, you can have wiring that's reversed, and this is going to do a very good job of picking those issues up. Now, one thing about this device, like the non-contact voltage detector, while this is a very accurate device in diagnosing things, it can, it's not always 100%. I have had some instances, it's rare, where this has either given me that everything is good or it's given me a different code than what the actual problem was. But it did alert me to there being an issue, so I was able to track down the actual issue, even though it wasn't what it was diagnosing, I was able to then correct it. So that is all really, really useful information. You definitely wanna make sure that everything is wired up correctly. But one of the functions on this particular device, since this is a GFCI outlet tester, it really helps a lot when you're trying to track down whether or not a particular receptacle or receptacles are actually GFCI protected. So you can insert this in to one of the receptacles and push the little button on top and what that's gonna do is it's gonna simulate a ground fault and it's gonna trip the GFCI receptacle if it's present on that circuit. So it can help you track down to make sure that everything is GFI protected like you want it to be, or if you find that it's not GFI protected because certain things have to be protected, then it's gonna let you know that you need to add some GFCI protection. And it's a really great way of testing your GFCIs to make sure that they are in fact working in the event of a ground fault. So this is absolutely, in my opinion, a must have device. Now the next device I'm gonna talk about is actually one of my favorites, but for me personally, I don't use it a ton, but when I do get to use it, it is very, very useful. And that is this clamp meter right here. Now, while I don't use this a lot of the time, I have used it in quite a few different applications, especially when I'm trying to find out exactly what amperage is running through a wire or a device, how much amperage it's calling for. What's really great about it is, especially with bigger wires, all you have to do is take the clamp and put it over the wire and it's going to be able to read the amperage that's running through that wire and give you an accurate reading. Now, for the most part, these do come with probes just like your standard multimeter would. So you can use this for very basic applications as well. But for the most part, the reason you're buying this is you're wanting to check amperages on large equipment, say your AC unit, for instance, it does a great job of being able to check your amperage. So obviously the more expensive they are, the more features that they have, it just depends on what you're wanting to use it for. Now these are just the basics that I think everybody should have in order to do electrical projects. And if you like electrical projects, I've shared a bunch of my own here on this channel in the past. I'll post some links right over here that you can click on to take you directly to those if you'd like to check those out. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments at all, leave those down in the comment section as well. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.